All right, we know that we're the only thing between you and lunch, so we will go fast, right? We are going to condense this. We have 14 songs that were templates for you to create perfect elevator pitches or value propositions. We're only going to do some of them today. And at the end, if you would like to come up and give your elevator pitch or value proposition, we'll give you a free book and then we will fix your elevator pitch right now live, okay? <laughs> it is great. This, this process works. Believe me, we've done this hundreds of times and it's a great opportunity for you. Whether you're a salesperson for first data or if you're out there raising money or if you're trying to impress a girl and get a date, no matter what you're trying to do, these little tips will help you go out there and present your idea in a clear, concise way so that people will do two things, right? If I'm out there and I see you as my target and I want to sell to you, what are the two things I want to do in that 30 seconds I have? Remember, I only give you 30 seconds after that I find you boring, right? So 30 seconds, what do I want to do? I want to be remembered when I go home at night. Honey, you're not going to believe who I met today. They're doing something really interesting. Well, what is it, honey? I can tell you. And number two, if I can provoke a question, if I can be so interesting that you go, okay, I got to hear more about that. That's interesting. Tell me more about that. What have you just done? You've made a sale. That person is eventually going to buy from you. So these are our goals. We're going to give you songs that will hopefully make you do these two things be remembered, and be sexy and interesting enough that you evoke a question. Yes, it's sexy. All right. Who's this, right? I remember when I was first exposed to Lady Gaga. The first thing I heard about her was that she showed up at some awards ceremony in an egg. Do you remember that? The guys were carrying her on big sticks in an egg, and I was like, okay, she's pulling Madonna from 1982. Madonna was shocking, interesting. The only reason we knew Madonna was she was over the top. And then she showed up at this other ceremony wearing a meat dress. Remember, she's in a, a dress of meat. I didn't know the music, but then one day I was driving and I heard this song. And I was like, this is a good song. I like this song. I, 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 who is this, by the way? And then the DJ came on and said, the new Lady Gaga song. And I was like, well, you know what? It works. I like it. I thought she was crazy. But she got into our vocabulary by being new and shocking, by being interesting. And that's how she tricked us into making her the world star that she is today. You see this all the time on the 11 o'clock news, right? Coming up. Tonight on the 11 o'clock news, shocking new details about a chemical in your house that is slowly killing your children right now. And so what do you do? You're like, well, I, honey, we got to watch this. Our kids are slowly dying. And then what happens at 11.28, not at, you know, 11.05, they trick you into watching the news, the weather, the sports. And then finally at 11.28, they let you know, my God, if you drink nine gallons of 409, you will kill your children. You're like, you know, I knew that. But they tricked you into it by the way they set it up, right? By being new, shocking, innovative is one way that you can be remembered. Let me give you a real life example. My first business back when I was 24, I started a, a summer camp business. I did that so I could go to school during the winter and I was thinking I need to do a summer camp and I, I don't like landscaping and I didn't want to clean pools. So what else is there? So I started a summer camp business, but I grew up as a dork. Shocking to some of you, isn't it? So anyway, I was like, we could do a computer summer camp. What if the kids come and we teach them computer stuff? That would be new and innovative. If you meet me in the elevator, honey, you're not going to believe the dork I met in the elevator today. He does computer summer camp. Can you think of anything dorkier, right? And so that worked for us for the first year. That was a very good shocking, new, innovative things. And you know what? Reporters would write about that. We would get in the newspaper, in magazines, on CNN, because here's this new thing. CNN loves to talk about things that are new, shocking, and innovative, right? So that worked really well for us. Who's next? What's another way that you can capture people's attention and make them remember you? It's if I make your life easy. If I can make your life simple, you're going to remember me. So our second template is Leonard Skinner.
simple man. If I can be simple, it makes your life easier. And you see that all over in advertising. The quick weight loss, the simple tax return, the easy button, right? All of these things are out there just bragging about how simple they are. We make your life super easy. If you come to us, oh boy, boy does our product make your life simple. And so it's a great way to be remembered. Our summer camp, the second year, we used this as our value proposition. Now, how many of you are parents, right? Why do you, why do you send your kids to summer camp? I have four kids, I'll tell you the answer. I send my kids to summer camp to get rid of them, okay? I love my kids to death, but I'm really glad that they're in your hair, not my hair all summer. But when does summer camp end, a day program? No, it doesn't. It ends at three o'clock, three or four o'clock, the same time that school ends. And then what do you have to do? Someone's got to get off work early to go and pick them up and drive them home, and then you still have to bathe them, you still have to feed them. What about a day program that goes until nine o'clock at night? You drop them off at eight in the morning, you don't have to pick them up until nine. <laughs> that is, I'm making your life so awesome. Now think about it, you can go to work, take your wife out for dinner, and pick the kid up on the way home and he falls asleep in the car. See what I'm doing for you? <laughs> you love that because I outsource your entire role as a parent. It's so easy. This worked really great. People loved this about our program. And even easier, we can you know, keep them overnight. We did that too. We had both. We had the day and the commuter and the overnight thing, the traditional thing. But this model worked for us and this was a great value proposition. If I find a parent in the elevator, you'll keep my kid until nine o'clock at night? Yes, sir, sign me up. What are you gonna teach him, by the way? Doesn't matter, you're right, I don't care. <laughs> All right, who else could we do? So our third template, our third song is, who is this, who is this band? And why do we remember them? Because they were a complete fraud, that's right. They did not <laughs> sing on their album. The only Grammy winners that actually did not sing on their own album. And of course, their story is very sad. One of them ended up committing suicide and the others, I don't know where he is, but it's a very sad situation. And you know what? Since they didn't sing, we're not gonna give them a song. <laughs> but we do talk about them as a great example of trust. If I, in my 30 second elevator pitch, can create so much trust in what I'm doing, you're gonna buy from me, right? So here is the brochure that in the third year of our summer camp we sent out. When you opened up the envelope from us, we designed it so that this poster came out. And the poster, I don't know if you can see it, but look at some of the brand names on this poster that are our partners. Adobe, Microsoft, the Discovery Channel, Lego, uh, George Lucas, the guy who made Star Wars, Fox, I don't know if that's credibility or not in this audience. Intel, Hasbro, do you want to send your kids to a company associated with these brands? You do. And so our elevator pitch that year became this. I run summer computer camps at MIT, Stanford, Georgetown, UCLA, sponsored by Intel and Microsoft. How can I help you? I was, does anyone doubt the quality of my program now? No, no one does. Everyone's like, wow, these people are pretty good. They're associated with Microsoft, Stanford, MIT. Would you like your summer to be spent at MIT? Do you want your kid to hang out at MIT all summer? Does that sound like a cool thing for your kid? And by doing this, I have established so much trust that there is no way in the world that you're not gonna give me my money. My money, not your money. And so I haven't told you the name of the company, on the telephone, when you call to give me your children for the summer, when I answered the phone, I didn't give you the name of my company because no one knows the name of my company. It's totally irrelevant. But I've wrapped myself in so many trust blankets here that you're going to sign the kid up. And we had a rule at our telephone center, nine minutes on the phone with mom, not dad, mom, we asked a very simple question. When are you thinking about going? Ooh, that week is pretty full already. What's your credit card number? 
because they would sign up. That was the, I mean, I promise you it worked really well. <laughs> but there's something even better. We can get even better than that. Who's this? Steven Tyler. Sweet emotion. If I can get you to cry, you're gonna buy. Right? 100% guarantee it. So what about this? Whoa. I was a dork when I grew up. I already told you that. Our clientele, as we quickly learned, were kids that were not on the football team. They were not cheerleaders. They had not found their social niche yet in life. They were going through middle school, high school, unhappy because they hadn't learned that the coolest thing in the world, the sexiest thing in the world is what? Smart. Is there anything sexier than smart? There is not. And so, <laughs> tell me something sexier than smart. Rich. No. Yeah, smart leads to rich, you know, I mean, remember the expression, that's right, but you remember the expression, you're going to grow up and work for me, you know that, right? So what about this? I get a mom on the telephone whose kid is not inherently happy, and I tell them this. What we do here is very simple at MIT and Stanford, sponsored by my, Intel and Microsoft. We take kids that aren't happy, and we make them happy. That's all I do. That's all I do is take unhappy kids and make them happy. What's your credit card number? <laughs> Think about this, if you had a kid that's coming home crying every day because they're getting bullied, because they don't have a best friend, and someone tells them, I'm going to give your kid a best friend that they're going to have a 30 year relationship, I'm gonna make your kid happy, are you gonna think twice about signing up for a program like that? No, you're not, you're gonna sign up as fast as you can because weeks are filling fast, you better enroll now. Nothing is more powerful than reaching through the telephone and grabbing mom's heart and saying, Mom, I'm going to make your kid happy. That's priceless. And that's what we charged. <laughs> All right. Who is this? The man in black. Johnny Cash. Tell me about a Johnny Cash song. What is a Johnny Cash song like? Well, my daddy left home when I was three and he didn't leave much to Ma and me. Just this old guitar and an empty bottle. A lot of them are sad, you're right. Now, I don't blame him because he runs. But they tell a story, the don't they? They're always about a story. And the reason left, for that is there's nothing better than turning the power off midway through my presentation. <laughs> I don't know if I did this, Josh, or what, but there we go. Stories are remembered. I will remember your story and I will not remember your point. I was a professor around the corner for a while, Chris and I met there. I would have students five years after they took our class, they would call up and say, Jim, you taught me something really interesting. Here's the story that goes with it, but I don't remember what you were trying to teach me. But I remember the story. And so what we do now is we say, well, let's combine some of the things we've done in the earlier part. Let's take a really good value proposition and then wrap it with a story because then no one can ever forget that. What do you do? We're on the 28th floor. We have 28 floors going down together. What do you do? I take kids that have never been happy before and I make them happy. Just last week I got a letter from a mom. She said that her daughter Allison has started laughing for the first time in years. That's what I do. What do you do? I don't, I want to talk about what I do. Tell me about that making kids happy thing again, right? She will go home, he will go home and say, you're not going to believe who I met in the car or the elevator today. There's this guy who makes kids happy. He got a letter from some girl named Allison. And the more details I can give you about Allison, the better the story is and the more memorable that it will be. For years, you will remember stories and you won't remember what the story was in reference to. I remember May 18th, 1985, I graduated high school here in town. The president of UGA spoke at my commencement. 
He told a story about people getting afraid of sharks running and smoking cigarettes in their car because they were afraid of the shark. I have no idea why he told that story, but to this day I remember the story. All right? So now Professor Hanks is going to come up and give you some more of these. We're going to wrap up here early so you can get, uh, go get your lunch. And then after that, some of you are going to come up and we're going to fix your elevator pitches right here, right now. All right, Professor Hanks. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So, anybody know this one? What is this called? Imagine. All right, what a beautiful way to structure a pitch. Because like what Jim talked about, I was like, how do you become remembered? Because that's the thing. We tend to think when we speak to people that it's about how much information I have to cover. And I'm going to download all these information because you're going to pay attention to everything I say. What percentage of the words that I say to you are you actually going to remember if you are even paying attention? What percentage is that? 7%. Do we remember body language or words better? Right? We trust, we tr if you do studies on trust, we trust actually body language more than we do the words. Does it matter how I say it or what I say? How, how right? Dude, I'm going to help you make more freaking money than you know what to do with. That is horribly worded. But maybe that's what more sort of remembered and impactful, right? So Jim's talking about, like, how do I become, how do I become remembered, right? How do I do that? I'm going to talk to you about just three real quick approaches, and we'll sort of skip this part since we're close to lunch, because I hate being the guy keeping you from lunch. And then we're going to bring you up real quick. So I'll just cover three different ways to structure a pitch. Now that I know how to, how to be remembered, and some of these things, that, yeah, i got to be simple, emotional, all that. How do I structure it? And Because the, the, the thing to keep telling yourself, I'm telling myself that now because I've got so much content. Jim and I could do this for weeks. There's so much to unpack. But it is not what information I have to cover. It's what do I want you to remember? Hey, if there's only one word you remember about me when you leave, what is it? If there's only one emotion that you experience when you are with me, what is that one emotion? How do I just cover that? So imagine is a great way to structure a pitch. Because if I get you to believe how your life is going to be, if you engage business with me, if I can get you to graph, if I can graphically paint a picture, we remember pictures better than we do words, and I can paint a picture of here's your life six months from now because you did business with me. Why is the world a better place because you exist? Let me get you to imagine how. A beautiful way to structure a pitch. Imagine. Imagine. Like if we did an exercise together, which we won't, but if we did, and I said, okay, imagine just standing on top of a very tall building. Right? Imagine what that's like. And then I did a good job of painting that picture, right, about the wind blowing in your hair and your toes hanging over the edge. What would start happening to you? You would start getting those butterflies in your stomach, right? Your hands would get all sweaty, right? You would experience the real physical sensation of standing on top of a tall building all while you know your butt's in the seat. That's why imagining is so powerful in structuring a pitch. I want you to imagine with me. Your life, you know what? You are going to increase your net profit by at least 125%, and let me show you exactly how, and I'm going to get you to imagine what your life will be like if you engage with me beautiful way to structure a pitch. Because, because imagining creates that emotional response. Have you ever cried at a movie? Did you know it was a movie? And it's not real? I was watching uh, Toy Story 3 with my wife at the end of the Toy Story 3. She's crying. All right, toys don't really do that. I mean, it's fake, right? But imagining makes it so. It makes it real to us. Goosebumps always sell. If I can get up to you and in three sentences give you something that gives you goosebumps, I'm going to get your wallet. You are going to engage in business with me. So imagine, what can I do to get you to see what I see? And leaders have to be the first believers. There are people who believe and then see, and there's people who see and then believe. Which one does an entrepreneur or a leader have to be? Because I have to lead you to this place that doesn't exist. So imagine with me how much better it will be once we get to that place. Let me paint that picture for you. Oh, the ball bearings? ball bearings? Dude, I was trying to edit for time. So, no. All right. So uh, what Jim is referring to a long time ago, now it's 2008, we won the national championship in the elevator pitch competition when I founded the entrepreneurship program at the University of Georgia. And we would travel around, MBA students, i take MBA students, we'd compete in elevator pitch competitions. And I, I coached a lot with elevator pitches. And I know 2008 is a long time ago to win a championship, but there was a lot, some rebuilding years in between then. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> but essentially, I had, I had a, a, some students do, uh, what they did is they basically had um, a snowboard that pivoted in the middle. And so when they pitch it, they talk about the mechanical engineering and the ball bearings and how it pivots and the, the half pipe and, the, and, and, and all these things you could do. It's like, dude, I can't understand that because I'm not a mechanical engineer. I don't understand ball bearings and I, I'm not a snowboarder. So I don't understand snowboards, you know, half pipe and all that. So let's not talk about problem solution. Let's talk about imagine, right? And this is essentially how they pitched it. Imagine driving a car without power steering. Now imagine driving that same car with power steering. That's what we do for snowboards. See, very quickly, I got a mental image of the benefit, not the feature, because we tend to talk in terms of features. And I don't care about your features. I don't care how long you've been in business. I don't care about any of that. I care about the benefit to me. What's in it for me if I do business with you? Talk to me in terms of benefit to me, because all I care about is my world. I don't care about your world. But yet, we keep talking about ourselves every time we pitch. Here, look, we got these beautiful offices. You should see our beautiful website. We've done this and we've done that. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. And the more I talk about my accomplishments, the less I listen to you. Because our brains, the way our brains work, we actually, you know, we tend to think the more I say, the more I say, what you're doing is you're adding up all those accomplishments in your mind. And so I'm gonna be more impressive the more I talk. You know, it's actually, what, you know what our brains really do? They average. So sometimes it's better just to say, that's why they say a great man is one sentence, you know? I don't need to say and, I, I can just say, you know what, here's what I've done. When I usually describe myself, say I'm the founder of the Entrepreneurship Center at yeah, Kennesaw State University. Anything else I add, you know, you're just gonna average that, oh yeah, and I owned a CD store a long time ago. You know, like, I don't know, and that doesn't really add to it. So, all right. This is one of the structures. Anybody know this guy? You know you're cool if you could just say one name and people know who you are, you say Frank. People know. If I so finish that phrase for me. If I can make it there, I can. New York is the one testament for success. What is yours? What tangible evidence and proof exists of your accomplishments and why I should do business with you? And just say one thing, not, not two things, not three things. If you said three things, you've said nothing. What's the one thing? The one thing. Finish this sentence for me. You are the only blank that does only blank. And if you can't fill that out, you're not that cool. If it takes you more than 25 words to tell me that, you're not that cool. So what's the one thing? You know, Frank did not say, if I can make it in New York, in Los Angeles, in Chicago. No, 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 it's New York, that's the testament, right? Hey, I do security for Fort Knox. Then shut up, no more. Great jazz, what separates good jazz from great jazz is the notes that they don't play, right? Just no, 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 shut up, shut up, nothing else. Oh, and, no, 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 and, no, we don't need an and. Let it hang there, let it hang. I am not going to overplay this hand. The more I talk, the more I lose. If you are too available, you are not that valuable. So I'm not going to push. I'm going to draw you in. I'm going to let my customers pay me, as opposed to force my customers to pay me. So, all right. And the last one that I will talk through. There we go. All right. Oh, yes, this is the best. This is the best. Oh, I love some vanilla ice. I do. And it's not just because I had my hair like that in the, in the 90s when I had a music business. Um, so what, like, like, finish this phrase for me for those of us who know the great... You know, it is so hard for me not to bust a move right now. I'm, I'm fighting it really, really hard. I am, I'm really, really struggling with that. So, if there is a problem, what will you do? Absolutely. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that the essence of entrepreneurship? If there's a problem, what will you do? You solve it. No, it, Vanilla Ice did not say, if there's a problem, I'm going to form a committee and study it. <laughs> right? If there's a problem, I'm going to complain about how unfair it is. If there's a problem, I'm going to whine about it. No, no, no. You know what? If there's a problem, what do you do? You solve it. You have a problem with pain that exists. You know what I do? I'll take that away for you. Isn't that a beautiful pitch? If there's a problem, I'll solve it. Now, there's other things to unpack with that, but that's really the essence of that. You struggle, tell me about the biggest problem you're struggling with. Really? I will completely take that away, and you will never have to worry about that again. Isn't that a beautiful pitch? Like, that's another way to structure it. So, let me review real quick. 
You got the John Lennon, right? Get, get, get your clients to imagine and dream with you. And logic makes us think, but emotion makes us act. Right? And so, so get, them, get them to dream with you. Imagine how much, like what can I say in a little, just to get you to imagine. Imagine how great your life will be. Where it's so much so that you can't wait to give me your money. You can't wait to engage me as a, as a, a, a vendor, a supplier, or whatever. All right? Frank Sinatra, you are the only blank that does only blank. Or a vanilla ice approach. You got this problem. You got this pain. You're frustrated by this. I will completely take it all away. Beautiful ways to structure a pitch. So, we want to call some people up. Who's first? Sir, Jeff Paul, come on up. Thank you for your bravery. Well, I was going to wear my meat suit today. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, uh, sir? Tell me about your business. Sure. Um, I've been thinking about this as we've been sitting out there. I'm the nerd that helps make your digital marketing and social media easy. Typically our clients uh, save six to eight hours a week with just one of my products. Okay, that sounds like just about every other digital marketing company out there, doesn't it? Okay, off the top of my head, I'm gonna throw this out. <laughs> That's the way this game is played. Uh, I'm the guy that gives you six extra hours a week. Wouldn't you wish, don't you wish that you could have a whole extra hour every day? That's what I do. Chris? A lot of times we tend to pitch it. We go to networking events and like we're going to go to lunch and you're going to talk to me and say, hey, what do you do? What do you do? It's more impactful to talk about who you help than what you do. Who do you help? Why is the world a better place because you exist? Um, so, and then talk in terms of the benefit, I'd paint that picture more, dra uh, more graphically, right? The benefit of what you do. Here is the benefit. Here's how my clients, and you can probably slide a story. Hey, you know what, just last week, I saved a company X amount of dollars because we saved that much time. That's what I do. So paint the benefit as graphically as you can. Good job, thank you. Grab a book. Thanks very much. Thank you, Jeff. So we're, we're going really fast here, but this is what we're talking about doing. I saw your hand first. Iris, come on up, play the game. You're the next contestant. What, Iris, tell me about your business, please. What do you do? What I do is I actually help you to know more about your hair and help you to grow your hair and to take care of it. Wow, she sees a problem. I'm going to fix it. Here you go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, you know what would have made that pitch better? You just drop the mic and sit back down. That would have been awesome. You'd have bam, boom. That would have been cool. Was this prearranged? I mean, is this a, a, am I on candid camera right now? <laughs> and you stared right at, stare at Chris now, Iris. <laughs> well, you asked the question. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Start over. Start over. I'll give my serious. Iris, what do you do? Forgot. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but what I do is I help Ooh. people to take care of their hair and to teach them about how to grow their hair back. And I also, <laughs> I also um, teach you about your um, health as far as the types of herbs and the types of vitamins and all the things that you need to take in order to keep your insides healthy so that your outside can be healthy as well. So, sir, I, I see that you're uh, follically challenged and I just <laughs> thought it might be interesting for you to know that if you were to change your dietary habits, you could actually regrow your hair and get married again. <laughs> So I would go at it that, sir, you may be surprised to know that your diet is hugely related to your hair. I'm the person that can teach you how what you eat and how McDonald's is bad for you. If you were to eliminate McDonald's, you might actually not lose your hair as fast. That's all I do. Yeah. Chris, how do you want to tackle so, this? Carefully um, <laughs> is how I want to tackle it. Uh, so. 
I heard you, like the, the health thing, I didn't know, did that have to do with hair exclusively? Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure of that. I thought maybe you were going with two different value propositions. We do hair and then we talk about diet. Right? I thought you were going in two different ways. We never want to pitch two different value propositions. You focus on the one, the one that matters most, and the one that resonates the most powerfully. So that's good. So you weren't trying to do that. I was a little confused on that. And then I would talk about the benefit. Just because you teach me about something, what's the benefit of me? So I would, I would jump right to what he's saying. Like, look, you know what? I help bald-headed people get a lot more hair, or something like that, where you're like, okay, here's the benefit. I don't care that you teach. I don't care about the how you do it yet. I care about the result of what you do. And if you can paint a picture for me about the result, you're going to get more results for you. Okay. Very good, Iris, though. Thank you for playing our little game. Have a book. And call me as soon as we get done. <laughs> All right, we got time for one more, and then it'll be lunch. Chris, I picked the last two. You pick the next one. All right, come on up. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Hi. What do you do? Hi. If you have information technology projects with limited budget, I can help you do more with less. I have helped companies like the largest airline that is based here in Atlanta. I just can't name them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we do. Okay. Have you ever heard that old expression that in a technology, you can't have quick, timely, and good? I'm the guy who actually figured out how to do all three. I just finished up a huge project for the largest airline here in town. They were 100% happy because I was quick, on budget, and I did a great job. That's all I do. Yeah. yeah. See how specific he was being versus general? Always there on specific versus general. Right? Yeah, when we throw out general things, right? if I say I help everybody achieve success, well, we all have different definitions of success, so it's hard for me to get that graphic image in my mind. right? So what Jim did was just very clear and very simple. Because when I hear things on like information technology projects, oh my gosh, we all, I say, hey, let's all define what that means. We're all going to come up with crazy different definitions. I have to speak with clarity, and the clarity gives me power. So thank you, thank you very much. All right, we are done. I want to thank First Data and SunTrust, of course, and of course the Metro Atlanta Chamber for hosting all of us.